Mythical Taurus was my entry for the 2023 Fireside Jam, hosted by Helper Wesley, Rocky Mullet, and Goblin Knuckles. The theme for the jam was Guide, and it was meant to be a relaxed 10-day jam. My schedule, however, had different plans. I was right in the middle of launching the demo for my upcoming game Searching for Rest when this jam started. Check the link in the description for more info on that. Anyway, nearly halfway through the development time of the jam, I began brainstorming. My first solid thought was to make a game about a robot that you can assign directives to through some kind of user manual. You would be presented with a level and have to mix and match what the robot can or cannot do from a sort of word bank. Something like, when the robot reaches an enemy, it'll attack, or it'll jump over it, turn around, or pick it up. If you pick the right directives, you would be able to watch the robot go through the level correctly and get to the end. This idea seemed good, but ultimately with only 5 days left, I didn't think I could pull it off. So I scrapped it in favor of a game where you guide tourists through a dangerous zoo for a set time, trying to not let them get eaten. I also wanted to implement a picture taking mechanic, where the tourists would lose patience over time and they'd have to take pictures to remain focused and listen to your instructions. At this point, it's 6 days into the 10 day jam and I'm just now opening Unity. Let's pull up a to-do list. I need to make the setting, the movements, the threats, the picture mechanic, and add finishing touches. Since it's meant to be a dangerous tour, I made the background a path with some grass on either side to indicate some sort of safari. Then, I created some basic looking people. To make it seem like the people were walking along the path, I just made the background scroll down and created a movement effect that drifted down from each character based on their movement animation. Then, I got to work on the movement for the guide and the tourists. I wanted there to be a set amount of positions that everyone could be in, that way I could make specific threats to avoid. I figured using WASD was a safe call because the positions would be associated with left, right, horizontal, and vertical. To make everyone move, I just assigned four predetermined locations for the guide character. The tourists would then follow the guide based off patterns that I came up with. Basically, when you press a movement option, it'll give a position for the tourist to go to based on the amount of tourists you still have following you. This means that no matter how many tourists you still have, they'll always conform to the positions in a satisfying way. At this point, the dangerous zoo idea was not working for me, so I pivoted to some kind of prehistoric tour. With this new thematic, the first threat had to be a Velociraptor Stampede. The Stampede spawns above the play area and goes down. This makes the player dodge left or right. I wanted players to know where the threats were coming from, so I added warning signs that would tell the player to be careful. Afterwards, I needed something to attack the top and bottom parts of the play area, and that's when I thought of a dragon breathing fire and slamming his tail down. At this point, the prehistoric aspect is starting to make less sense, so I thought to change it to a mythological tour. Finally, the last threat was meant to be a meteor shower on the right and left sides of the play area. When I showed my friends, though, they asked if the dinosaurs had learned to shoot cannons. I don't know about all that. Anyway, at this point, I started to think about that picture-taking mechanic and how the tourist's patience would work, but I couldn't find an interesting way to implement something like that without it being too annoying. Since the game was becoming a fast-paced dodging game, I figured it would be fun to have the player try and take pictures of randomly appearing creatures while trying to keep their tourists alive. So I added six different mythical creatures that spawn at random intervals while playing. The creatures spawn at short intervals and move quickly, so the player needs to be fast to get a good score. Speaking of score, I wanted there to be an incentive to keep all the tourists alive, so I thought that they could multiply your score at the end of each run. That felt like a cheap reward, so instead I made it so that when you're done dodging, depending on how many tourists you saved, there'll be an equal amount of creatures to take pictures of for a short amount of time. Kind of like a bonus stage where you can earn a lot of points. This felt way more fun and added a nice feeling of achievement after a well-played run. Now I needed to add the end screen, where your score would be calculated based off the pictures you took. I tried to make it as satisfying as possible, and even added multiple pieces of dialogue depending on your final score. While making the end screen, one of my friends was talking about beating my high score, and it got me thinking about a leaderboard. I figured I could dedicate a bit of time to it. Using Dan DanQZQ's leaderboard creator on itch.io, I was able to make a leaderboard really easily. Go check out the link in the description if you're interested in making one yourself. As is customary for my last few games, I also added difficulty settings in the form of a slider, where you can alter the spawn rates of threats while also altering your score gain. Finally, I added some sound effects and music. I'll link the songs I used in the description if you're interested. After that, I quickly made an interesting game page with all the assets I already had and submitted with 12 minutes to spare. Thank you very much for watching. You can play this game and many others for free on my itch.io page in the description. Feel free to also check out the free demo for my upcoming Steam game Searching for Rest, also in the description. If you like this video and want to see more like it, consider subscribing.